Hey guys, welcome to another edition of I waited an entire year to get my new suppressor and now I don't even want it anymore featuring the YHM R9. This is one of Yankee Hill's 9mm cans. This one is not intended primarily for use with handguns. This is more of a subgun can. We'll talk about the differences between pistol and subgun suppressors later on. This could also, I guess, be used as something of a, a universal suppressor or a first suppressor, but we'll interrogate that idea later as well. The reason I got this is because I primarily wanted to suppress my PTR 9CT. The R9 could be set up for direct thread or tri lug both ways to suppress the MP5 platform, so that would be fun to try both of those out. And I was kind of hoping that suppressing the 9CT would be the last little autism puzzle piece that was keeping me from enjoying that gun. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. The reason I didn't buy a dedicated or purpose-built pistol suppressor is that suppressing handguns kind of sucks. There's not a lot of utility there, and also suppressed handguns just kind of shoot like crap in general. You can use this can as a pistol suppressor in a pinch. It's not a very good candidate for it, but at least I do have that option if I ever want to screw around with it, i.e. almost never. We can compare the YHM R9 pretty closely to two other cans, both from YHM, just to make the comparisons a little simpler. One of them is the YHM Sidewinder 9, which is the same caliber but extremely different in design. The other one is the YHM Resonator K, which is similar in design and dimensions, but is for a 30 caliber, not a 9mm. Pistol suppressors like the Sidewinder tend to be long and skinny versus shorter and fatter subgun cans like the R9. Even long skinny pistol suppressors like the Sidewinder 9 will still block normal height pistol iron sights. The larger outside diameter of the R9 means that even with suppressor height sights you probably won't be able to see over this thing if you use it on a pistol. Generally speaking the internal volume of the can contributes directly to how effective it is at sound suppression, so one can is long and skinny, one can is short and fat. Theoretically, they're both accomplishing a similar amount of work, though obviously the internal geometry is quite different. The takeaway is that if you're not worried about blocking pistol iron sights, you can make a shorter, fatter subgun can and get similar levels of sound suppression with less overall length. There's also a pretty major weight difference between the Sidewinder and the R9. If you install the pistol booster and piston assembly that's needed to run an R9 on a handgun, you end up with a total overall weight of about 14 ounces versus a total overall weight of about 10 ounces for the Sidewinder 9. There's a pretty major difference in materials though. The Sidewinder 9 is made up of an aluminum monocore inside of an outer sleeve, whereas the R9 is all stainless steel welded construction. The R9, intended for use on submachine guns, is full auto rated and is probably way more durable than a Sidewinder 9. We can also compare the R9 to the Resonator K. They are both very similar in design and overall size, but the R9 is ever so slightly longer than the Resonator K. The R9 has more baffles in it than the Resonator K, but the baffles are also of a different design. The R9 has more traditional style clipped baffles, whereas the Resonator K has a couple of different baffles as well as a perforated blast baffle at the rear. Both of them weigh about 10 ounces with no mounting interface installed, and both of them are hub compatible, meaning that they are threaded for all of the usual adapters and inserts and stuff like that. The difference in baffle design results in very different caliber ratings for both of these cans. They're both rated for 300 blackout down to an 8 inch barrel with supersonic ammunition, but the Resonator K is rated down to significantly shorter barrels with 308 and 556. Officially, the R9 shouldn't be used on a barrel length shorter than 16 inches in either 308 or 556. So I bought the YHM R9 for use as a subgun can, but with sort of an eye to the general universal nature of this type of suppressor. It seems like when most guys are shopping for their first suppressor, they lean towards a versatility can like the Resonator K. That way they have one can that they can use on most of their guns, and down the line they can worry about picking up a dedicated suppressor for 5.56 or pistol calibers later on. You could consider the R9 to be a better choice for a versatility focused or universal suppressor than the Resonator K because it also will allow you to shoot 9mm and attach to a handgun. Taken to its logical extreme, you end up with a 46 caliber behemoth of a suppressor like the one that Luke C has. He uses that suppressor on everything from 458 SOCOM and 4570 on the top end all the way down to 22 long rifle. It's definitely possible to buy one suppressor that does everything, but it's probably going to be bad at everything. I probably won't end up using the R9 on a 9mm gun most of the time, not just because I'm sick of PCCs, but also because suppressing handguns is lame and stupid, but that's okay because it's compatible with the large stockpile of YHM mounts and adapters that I've already got. I can use this thing on a 9mm handgun using the Nielsen booster, I can attach one of the Phantom QD mounts and attach it to any of my 30 cal or 5.56 flash hiders, and I can also direct thread it to a half by 28 or 5.8 by 24 barrel with the adapters that I've already got. 
it's not going to do a great job in most of those applications. As a direct thread 556 can, it's not a terrible choice for a 16 inch gun because it's a relatively compact lightweight suppressor and 16 inches already don't need nearly as much suppression effect as shorter barrels do. What I'm most likely going to do is put the Phantom QD adapter on this and use the R9 as my 300 blackout suppressor, which will free up the Resonator K to be direct threaded onto a series of 308 rifles. The flexible nature of the R9 means that even though I'm sick of my PTR 9 CT and will probably never shoot it ever again, at least the year I spent waiting for this can wasn't completely wasted. And yes, I know that sounds like cope, because it is. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like this channel, subscribe. Consider clicking the link in the video description to go to my Subscribestar page and support me directly. There are various benefits to doing so, but most of them just exist in your own mind. See you guys next time. All right, got seven rounds per magazine, 220 subsonic. Starting with the Resonator K and switching to the R9 for magazine two.